There's a sling in my voice And a stone in my praise Pushing back when the darkest weapons form And there's a power on my lips Even death can defy When the name of our God is lifted high Cause there is resurrection power When we sing the name of Jesus Resurrection power When we raise a mighty sound So come on, let the praise get loud Make that empty grave resound Cause there is resurrection power in his name and there are days i have seen filled with heartache and loss that have buried my heart beneath the wave but every time his praise breaks out dead things rise up from the crowd i won't leave my song inside
Mark had had an accident and lost his memory. It was Christmas. So we had to help him remember the real meaning of Christmas. This is the best Christmas present ever. Good morning, church. Welcome. Um, it's so lovely to see you. It is a joy to be in church. And we are just praying over you this morning as you watch this exciting service. And also, as it is Christmas, yes, it is Christmas. And we, uh, over the last few weeks, have been busy in church. Uh, there's a lot of things been going on, a lot of people uh, maybe are getting a little bit tired, but we are there. We're nearly there. We're celebrating this amazing, amazing season. Um, Friday was 24-7 prayer, and we're going to update you a little bit later on things that have been shared, things that have come out of that, which is really exciting. But going back to that busyness over the last few weeks, we just want to say thank you to everyone who has been involved in uh, Christmas things that have been happening. And we've got a little video now just to sum up the amazing, amazing things that have been happening. Hey guys, it's really great to be able to share with you a little bit about how we are reaching into this community this Christmas and literally reaching thousands of people. And we have the great privilege to be able to have amazing people in our church that are doing that, that are going to share a little bit of that story now. In the church building this year, it's felt like the church building has been closed and sealed a little bit this year, but we're still looking for ways to use this building for uh, God's purposes. And one of the ways that we're able to do that this Christmas is with Operation Christmas Child, who we've been able to partner with again this year. Last year, we had an amazing 2,000 boxes come through as we acted as one of the drop-off and distribution points for them. And we're doing that again this year. So next week, boxes will be flooding back into the church building as they were, and we will be palleting them and sending them up for processing before they will be shipped out to children across the world. It's been a little bit stressful this year with delays because of lockdown, but we are guaranteeing that those children are going to get their presents, and Bridge Church is acting as a really vital part of the logistics of that this year, which is amazing and fantastic to be involved in. This Christmas, we've got a great opportunity to give out 35 packs to young people that we're connected with through our Bible studies and through this church. And in these packs, is gonna be a 180 day devotion that's aimed at teen boys, teen girls, so it's specific to them. There's also gonna be some chocolate and some candy canes and glow sticks. We really want them to feel valued and of worth and welcome as part of our church. So we're praying that this Christmas, they would receive that gift from us as a church and just know the importance that we value them. Uh, so I would encourage you to join us in praying as these packs go out. This year, as part of the women's ministry chosen at Bridge Church, we have had hosted a Chosen's Countdown to Christmas. That has involved ladies purchasing a uh, goodie bag and a devotional called Fixated. And as a result of that, we are delighted to let you know that we have been able to gift 200 pounds to the women's crisis center based in Bodmin and that will be able to support those women during this time and throughout the year so thank you to all those who have purchased their bag. Bridge Church this year decided that they would get involved with the Cornwall Christmas Dinners in a Box initiative and together between the house groups and individuals within the church we have collected by the end date of the delivery date approximately 10 boxes, not quite sure of the actual amount yet. Um, but those are dinner box, Christmas dinner in a box for disadvantaged families and children within the whole of the County of Cornwall. It's organised by Cornwall Council um, for the delivery through the food banks and other statutory organisations so that everyone gets a chance to have something at Christmas. Hi everyone, so this year Bridge Kids are sending out a pack to every kid in the four primary schools of Launceston. It'll include chocolate, information about what we do here in Bridge Church for the kids and for the families, and also a pack 
the 12 Revelations of Christmas, which is an AR, augmented reality experience, which allows them to experience the Christmas journey in a way that they probably never have done before. I am so excited and I just pray that every pack will go out and reach every family in Launceston. It is gonna be amazing. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that amazing? And if you were in the room this morning, I'd be encouraging you to whoop, to be able to shout. To Honestly, I watch that and it's like uh, there's, there's almost tears of joy and just excitement and I want to jump up and down. We as a church, we're, you know, we do pull together even when we're not meeting personally together as well. And so I just want to encourage you. Thank you. And what a blessing Bridge Church will be to this community and so many other churches as well. What a blessing they will be to, to this community, but also further, further afield as well. So incredible. And just in light of that, and as we talk about Christmas, just a couple of things to share. Um, if you love Christmas carols, then we want to encourage you that next week on the 20th, there is a Christmas carol drive-in service at Homely Garden Center at 6.30 in the evening. So if you want to get along to that, pull up in your car and sing some carols, then please do that. It's going to be an amazing event. Also, here next week, we are really excited to say that you know, we know that you have missed worshipping together. We know that we, we've all missed getting together and just being with each other. And next week, we realize that actually as we've moved throughout this year, there comes a time where we really need to just work through things and, and process what has happened in 2020 because it's been a really strange, very different year for so many. And so what we're doing at 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock next week is we're going to be running just, um, or we've called it this invitation into intimacy with the King. And it's just a time of prayer, a time of worship, a time of seeking God's heart, and just a time of quiet and, and listening and just being in, in presence with the Father and, and with other people. It's limited that we can only fit 35 in in each sitting. So guys, get online and book up. Uh, there is going to be something coming out tonight with a link for you all. And some of you might have seen that already, but please, please get booked up because it is going to be a really incredible night. Um, and the other thing to say is that in light of obviously this journey through 2020 being so different and so um, hard, but also sometimes uh, a real joyful time for so many as well, we, um, we realized that we had a panel of people a couple of weeks ago that just shared from their hearts, shared what God was doing with them, how God has been speaking to them. Um, and we want to encourage more of that. We want to hear more of your stories. And so we're starting something that's called Lockdown Journeys, which is going to be going out midweek on a Wednesday. Day. Um, and it's just going to be a, a short interview, 10, 15 minute interview with people from the church that just get to share a little bit about their journey since March all the way through to just how um, they have dealt with some of the challenges in their life and, and to just encourage us in faith um, as we do this journey together. Uh, I'm just going to pray and then we're going to hand to the band. Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your blessing. We want to thank you for your grace. We want to thank you for this season, Lord, that we get to celebrate you. Lord, we thank you for the hope that you bring, Lord, and the peace that you give. And so, Father, just as we worship you in song, Lord, we just pray that we will connect so, so evidently and so incredibly. In your name, amen. Good morning, church. It is such a joy to be with you this morning. Um, it is carols all the way, uh, so I hope you've got your singing voices ready uh, at home to join in with us. That'd be great. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her care. Let every heart prepare him room in heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing we will sing joy we will sing joy we will sing joy joy to the world Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. 
Plow fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. We will sing joy. We will sing joy. We will sing joy. Joy to the world. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love of his love we will sing joy we will sing joy we will sing joy joy to the world we will sing joy we will sing joy we will sing joy Joy to the world. We will sing joy. We will sing joy. We will sing joy. Joy to the world. We will sing joy.
frosty wind made moan I stood hard as I am Water like a stone Snow the 
is just an incredible time now just to be able to close your eyes just if you're sat at home maybe you've got a lot of noise going on maybe you can pick up the laptop or the phone or whatever and just move somewhere where it's just a little bit quieter and just close your eyes as we pray this morning as we just listen and and hear from God this morning. There's been a couple of words that have come over um, yesterday and today, and um, just one of them was that uh, there was this real sense, this real feeling that there is someone out there that feels like they're drowning at the moment, like that life is just too much and that it's all a little bit too too full on. And um, God wants to remind you, just like Peter, as he reached out his hand and he called him and said, he is here, he's with you, he's with you in the mess, he's with you as, as you try to, try to walk, as you try to tread water, he's with you. And he reaches his hand out and he pulls you up, he pulls you out, and he wants to walk with you. There's also that sense just uh, came through this morning, that sense of desperation, that people perhaps this year, and we've heard it through some of the incredible things that uh, as a church and, and so many churches are doing, just stepping out um, this year at Christmas, just to bring hope into what is a hopeless time it can seem. And, and there's just that real sense of desperation and, and God wants to bring hope and he wants to bring peace and he wants to bring joy into that situation. And so we're thanking him for that. Hold on to that this morning. He is here and he desires to walk with you, desires to dwell in you. And yeah, just following on from 24-7 prayer on Friday, there were some thoughts and words and pictures that have come out of that. And I just want to share some of those with you right now. And one of them was, it says, God's blessing would flow like a river through Launceston and it would impact Cornwall through the work of the Spirit in Launceston. Another one shared, following on from that, somebody different about the words based in um, Jeremiah where it says about having a plan. Another one was, I will put my spirit within you. And this was followed up by an image of living water coming along the A30 and linked to a final thought of my plans cannot be stopped. And yeah, just following on from, from what Sam's just shared and prayed about these difficult times, I really believe at the moment, and this was evident on Friday, that we have all had some difficult times this year in the past, but especially this year. And I heard this week that sometimes we just don't know what to pray. We don't know what to say. We don't, we don't yeah, we don't have those words. And I just want to reiterate that we can just go back to the promises of God and what God has promised. So when you don't have those words, just base your prayers on the promises. So I'm just going to pray now. Lord, I just thank you for the words that have been shared on Friday. Those images, those words, those, um, that scripture that has come through, Lord. Lord, we just pray over those right now. Lord, we pray that this town of Launceston would be a place where river flows, Lord. Lord, that it would have such an impact on Cornwall. Lord, in every area, the youth, the women's, the kids, the men's ministry in this community, Lord, we just pray that right now. And we also, Lord, just, just pray your promises right now over this town, over this community. Pray for those people that are tr uh, just have such difficult seasons right now. Lord, we know that you are with us. We don't need to ask you to be with us because we, are, we know. Your promises say that you are with us always. You are a good, good Father, Lord. You give strength to the weary. And Lord, that you give us peace over our hearts and our minds. And Lord, we just pray that right now. Over those people that are facing those seasons right now, we just pray your promises of peace. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to the word coming from Bridge Church this morning. The second week in our Christmas countdown series. It's like opening the window or the door to your advent calendar. Last week we opened the window, we opened the door on hope. This week we opened the window, we opened the door on peace. And this morning we're joining shepherds in their fields. They're looking after their sheep, they're on home territory, and they're doing what they do, where they do it. It's just another day, just another night duty in the field, looking after their flocks at night, or so they thought. We join them in Luke chapter 2, and reading from verse 8 to 14. That night, some shepherds were in the fields outside the village, guarding flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel appeared to them, and the landscape shone bright with the glory of the Lord. They were badly frightened, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you the most joyful news ever announced, and it is for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born in Bethlehem. How will you recognize him? You will find a baby wrapped in a blanket, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, they sang and peace on earth, peace on earth for all those pleasing him. Angels brought good news to those shepherds in the fields watching their flocks by night. A message of peace and reassurance came to them right where they, right where they were doing what they do. It was not just another night shift after all. The sky fills with light, and an angel appears. They were frightened by the angel, but they were in awe of what the angel said, the message the angel brought of reassurance and peace. There's a brilliant line from the Chosen Ladies Advent countdown to Christmas this year, already been mentioned in that gorgeous bag that went out to ladies who purchased it, called Fixated. And it says this, For all the fireworks going on in the sky, the real action took place, largely unseen, in a borrowed stable. The angel's song is about peace. Jesus is peace. You see, this kind of peace, it's not a vague aspiration. Jesus made it real when he died on the cross for us. Mandy used the verse last week found in John 3 and 16, and it says this, for God so loved, he so loved, 
He so loved the world that he gave his only son that anyone, anyone, everyone, that's you, that's me, who believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it but to save it. God so loved. He so loved. He so loved that he gave. He gave, and the gift he is giving to us today is the gift of peace. And it's for anyone. It's for everyone who will believe in Jesus. The angel appeared to ordinary people doing ordinary things. But when they appeared, there was an awe. You see, the angels weren't amazing, but who they are pointing to is. The angels were majestic, but Jesus is his majesty. The angels startled, and they got the shepherds' attention. Their purpose was to do this, to hear the message. But you see, it was who they talked about that caused the shepherds to leave what they knew, where they were, those fields, and go and seek this baby to find the very source of peace. It was like a home delivery right there, that message coming to them right there in their fields where they worked, right to their door. I've recently started having home delivery, my shopping, my weekly shop brought to my door. It's been like a revelation to me. Um, all that you need delivered to your door. It's quite amazing. And I remember when I was due the first home delivery and you get your time slot and you get a rough idea about when they're coming. And I was so excited. And I'm looking out for this guy to come over the road in his van. And when he pulled up, he said to me, oh, blimey, love, you're pleased to see me. And I said, yeah, I am. It's, it's really great, isn't it? But you see, as pleased and thankful as I was to see him and thanked him for what he was doing and what such a convenience for me to have the home delivery brought to my door. What I really wanted was to get the bags inside, get what he brought, unwrap it, look at it, because you see, I was going to be unwrapping all that I needed for that week. You know, when the home delivery guy comes with your takeout, and he might come on a little scooter, or he might come in his car. You're so pleased to see him, but it's the contents of the thermal bag that he hands over that you so want to get open and get tucked into that takeaway and enjoy what has been brought to meet your needs. You see, the wonder is not in the angels that brought the message. The wonder is in the baby in the manger who is the message. And he is the message of hope, of peace, of joy, and of love. In their fright, those, those shepherds were alarmed. But peace was spoken, even in the fright. Glory to God in the highest heaven, they sang. And peace on earth for all those pleasing him. Can you imagine what that good news sounded like to those shepherds in their fields, watching their flocks by night, just doing what they're doing, where they're at? And this amazing, life-changing good news comes right where they are to humble shepherds just doing what they do. What does it sound like to you today? We all need and can have this good news of peace. An angel appeared, and it says the landscape changed. The view looked different. There was light where once it had been dark. Peace sheds light into situations, and it takes away fog. It takes away the blurriness and the darkness. This peace will cause you to move from darkness into light. The atmosphere changed because of the message that was heard, and it was a message of reassurance and peace. Verse 10, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 
Philippians 4 verse 7 says this, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Another version says the peace of God, which surpasses, passes, surpasses. The peace of God is beyond. It is beyond everything that we could ever imagine. It's so big. It's so good. And it brings peace of mind and a calmness in your heart. In these days that we are living, we need to hear this message of peace, don't we? This peace that doesn't mean the absence of trouble or difficulty, but it's a peace that is so vast, so surpassing, that it can be found in our hearts, in our lives, through Jesus, in the trouble and in the difficulty. Don't be afraid. So at home, if you're joining us live now or wherever you're going to be listening from today, whether you're going to catch up later in the week, right where you are, doing what you do, it's not an ordinary day after all. This same word spoken today, it is as alive this Christmas day as it was that first Christmas. In Jesus, we have reassurance and peace, a peace that can be spoken in all our frights, all our scares, all our situations, a peace that will shed a light and change your outlook and change the scenery of your circumstance. His birth at that first Christmas and this Christmas fulfills what was spoken in Isaiah 9, verse 6. And it says this, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of peace. He is the prince of peace. So just when you thought, it's just another day, let Jesus, the prince of peace, change your environment, your landscape. Let him bring light where there has been darkness, where it's been foggy and it's been blurred. Let him change the atmosphere in your life from fear to peace. And this Christmas, just not another Christmas, but one where you unwrap hope and peace. John 14 and verse 27, Jesus says this to us this morning. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, this Jesus peace, this peace found in the Prince of Peace, is a gift that lasts. It's eternal, it's life-changing, and it never leaves you nor forsakes you. And it is for the anyone. It is for the everyone wherever you are and whatever you're doing, if you believe in him, if you be like those shepherds and you hear this morning and you think, I've got to go and seek this Jesus. I've got to go and look for this Prince of Peace. So I pray that just as you open your, cab your Advent calendar window and door, just as you light your Advent candle and you let it burn down its allotted time for the day, open and unwrap the gift of hope and peace this Christmas and continue with us in this Christmas series as we unwrap love and joy over the next couple of weeks. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you you are peace. You bring peace. Lord, I pray over those situations mentioned in our prayer time. 
Lord, those people, Lord, that find themselves in a time of darkness where it's just got foggy and somehow they just can't see. Lord, I pray that just as we open the door to the gift daily, I pray that this Christmas we will open the door to hope, to peace, a peace that is everlasting, a joy and a love found in you. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you, Jill, for, yeah, such a timely reminder of this season. And just like Jill was saying about um, our devotional that we're reading at the moment as women, fixated, actually focusing on the real reason for this season when we can become so busy in everything that is happening and so many um, things that are involved with Christmas, um, just to focus on that peace, that hope, that love and that joy. We are really, really excited for the upcoming couple of weeks. Just a reminder, uh, Sam mentioned earlier about next Sunday, the 20th, book in online. I really encourage you to do that. Like he said, there is limited spaces, and I imagine that is going to be really, really popular. So book in. Also, next Sunday it is the kids' Christmas, as you saw at the beginning. That's another exciting thing that's going to be happening. Um, but we have a real treat to finish off every week so far. The youth have been undertaking a doorstep challenge. And next Sunday, we are delighted to say that they will be live. So they will be doing a challenge in church for you to see live. But let's just finish off um, the service this morning with our lockdown uh, video. And we just pray that you have a super week. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Hi guys, so we're in week three of our doorstep challenge for this week's challenge. Uh, it's a bit of a fun one. They're gonna get strapped to a chair uh, with cling film uh, and then the quickest person to rip out of it. We've got uh, Joel Doyle, Albert Blenko and Josie Hoskin. So I'm off now to uh, go and catch them and we'll see how they get on.
just back from uh, filming those three guys. Well, that was a bit close to the mark, but I just want to let you know, Albert Blenko is absolutely fine. There was no young person harmed in the making of this video. I promise you he's fine, but a little, good little bit of fun. Uh, Albert unfortunately came in third. Uh, I feel like he had a bit of a disadvantage from tipping over. Uh, Josie in second, and well done to Joel Doyle. He's our winner this week. Next week's doorstep challenge is going to be coming live from Bridge Church on the Sunday morning. So look out for that.